Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to look at the relation between the deformation and the displacement gradient. For this let us recall the setup in continuum mechanics, where we have a body which undergoes a motion, and we take two snapshots of it, one in a reference configuration, usually in the unloaded state, and one in the spatial configuration, when it is loaded. Then we can track some continuum particles, think of tracking some atoms in there, and we can assign them a position in the reference configuration and a move position or like a change position after the motion in the spatial configuration. We can assign some positional vectors to them and the vectorial difference of the two is the displacement. Let us recall what was a motion. A motion was a mapping from an X to, or from a capital X to a smaller X, so it assigns each material point its position in the spatial configuration. And we can equally describe the motion by the help of the displacement and the displacement was a function which was a mapping from capital X to a vector u and the displacement assigns, well, a displacement vector to each material point in the reference configuration. To each material point in reference configuration. And based on these two definitions of the motion, I mean, both describe the motion, the motion itself and the displacement, we derived two quantities. And the first was the deformation gradient defined with a capital F tensor or rank 2 tensor, a matrix, and it is defined as the derivative of the spatial position with respect to the reference position. And we had the displacement gradient. The displacement gradient was called capital H also rank 2 tensor, a matrix, and it is the derivative of the displacement vector with respect to the reference configuration. And as I already said, displacement and motion are somewhat the description for the same behavior of the change in our continuum potato. So we could also try to find a relation between those two. And for this, we will look at the vectors or the vector arithmetic that is used in here. And based on what we have here, we can equally express x as the original position, or like the capital X, plus the displacement u. So let's write this down. We know we have small x is capital X plus the displacement u. Well, then let's plug it into the deformation gradient. So now we have an expression for the small x. And then let's say capital F is the derivative of small x with respect to capital X. Then we have, well, it's just a, just a sum. So the derivatives separate between those two. So we have the derivative of the reference configuration with respect to itself, plus the derivative of the displacement with respect to the reference configuration. Now we have the derivative of a quantity with itself, but a vector with respect to itself, and this is the rank 2 identity tensor. And here we have, well, the derivative of u with respect to x. This is our displacement gradient. So what we get out is we have an f, or this deformation gradient, is the rank 2 identity tensor, or just the identity matrix, plus the deformation gradient. And this is our relation. Easy, wasn't it? Let us look at an example. And for this I will use the following scenario. So we have a two-dimensional problem and we have a reference configuration of the following shape. So we have a square with one by one and this one by one square is extended in the, or like 
elongated in the first axis to be of two length afterwards, but it keeps its height. And we can derive a motion for this. So what is the relation of the spatial configuration with, with the reference configuration? That's our motion. And we said that our small x is given by chi, the motion. And here we also have a stationary transformation, so it does not depend on the time. And if we now think of the easiest case of a linear motion, and we, for example, have a particle here, which is as position 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the reference configuration, and it is then moved to the position 1 and 0 0.5, then the motion would be, so our position in the first direction will be two times the position of the reference configuration. So it is 2 capital X1. The position in the second direction will be the same as in the reference configuration. So it is just x2. Similarly, we can also derive a displacement. And the displacement is, well, let's see, we have the position at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, and we move to 1. So our displacement is 0 0.5 in the first direction, and it's 0 in the other direction, meaning that we move to the right by the same amount or as far as our position actually is. So we have an x1 here and we keep a zero because there is no displacement in the second direction. Okay, let's derive deformation and displacement gradient. Deformation gradient Der derivative of the spatial configuration with respect to the reference configuration. So derive the vector with respect to x1 will be 2, 0, and with respect to x2 will be 0 and 1. And then the displacement gradient, derivative of the displacement with respect to the reference configuration, and derive it with respect to x1 is 1, 0, and with respect to x2 is 0, 0. So then we can say, well, our identity holds f is h plus, or let's put it the other way around, is i plus h. And this is the 1, 1 matrix plus the 1, 0, 0, 0 matrix. And then we have the 2, 0, 0, 1 matrix. And this is our result. And the most important fact from our today's session is that you should recall this relation between the deformation and the displacement gradient. Thanks for watching.